Welcome to A Lovely Time, a podcast where we speak to comedians to find out how they'd spend a perfect day. I'm Amy Gledhill and my idea of a lovely time is a wedding where the canapes are little Yorkshire puddings. Oh, sod the bouquet. My guest today is a comedian, podcaster and a man who has made lockdown almost bearable with his unbelievably good videos. It's Alice the Beckett King. Let's have a lovely time then, shall we? Hello, Alistair. Hi, Amy. Hi, how are you doing? I'm okay. I'm all right. Uh, Happy birthday. So far, I'm having a lovely time. Happy birthday to me. I thought you were going to say to me. No. Why not? You give the impression of probably being an Aries. Are you an Aries? No. Redheaded, opinionated, angry, difficult to... Scorpio. Scorpio. I don't know. I don't know what that is. Basically, like a big sea insect. Is it? A crab? No. Are you talking about the horoscope or me? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think of you as a big sort of crab, lobster, <laughs> all carapace and pincers. You've got me in one. He but has very, got me a, 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 soft, a soft inside, a soft sort of fishy interior <laughs> behind a hardened shell. Uh, uh, is it chitin? Chitin? I don't know how it's pronounced. Well, whatever it is, that's what it says on my spotlight. <laughs> Playing edge. Uh, yeah, accent Irish, North American crab. <laughs> I do look quite crabby. <laughs> I'm. I can move like a crab. Let yeah. that be known. Yeah, big mm, time. Mm. My, can you this... move not like a crab? Because no. that does limit the roles. Can you move forward <laughs> and backwards and diagonally? I reckon I could if I really put my mind to it, but I'm just not interested in that. <laughs> The favorite. I'm just going to tell you very quickly. The best we I've ever done was uh, naked and running like a crab and weeing. <laughs> <laughs> best we I've and ever done. Is that done. the best we in terms of the most enjoyable, or has it been rated by an outside <laughs> body? Has that been valid, like the Guinness Book of Records? Has that been validated in some way? I should have invited them party. along. <laughs> No, that's just me. That's just I've rated that one. But maybe, maybe we could all, if anyone listening thinks they can, they can top that. Mm. Bring it on, because that was really good. <laughs> I've never felt so free in my life, running like arms up, I, making I the crab gesture. I strongly disagree, because I mean, I, 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 it's probably a bit different for you and me doing that. But I think if you are, if you are naked, especially if you're barefoot and and running and and weeing. You want to be going forwards or backwards. You, you don't want to be going sideways. <laughs> Otherwise, one or other of the feet are getting involved just just due to drift. It's just <laughs> well, basic apparently, physics. apparently, it's very good for athlete's foot, a bit of urine. <laughs> is it? Is that true? Yeah, apparently, yes. Yeah. So, so one, of, one of the feet then is absolutely fine. And the other my one... My right foot is gleaming. It's so soft. <laughs> my left foot is calloused and... What what happens when you get athlete's foot? This isn't how I wanted to start the podcast. Yeah, what's, isn't the premise of this podcast a lovely time, not mm. a horrible foot? <laughs> yeah, that's the offshoot. That's the offshoot <laughs> podcast. Yeah, it's like Big Brother's Little Brother. <laughs> a horrible foot. The lovely time. Yeah, disgusting feet. My my feet are not great, so let's not get into it. Okay. All right. Lovely. Well, happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. What have you done to mark the occasion so far? We are talking at 2pm, so yeah, um, you're not halfway through the day yet. No, no, exactly. Uh, very little, but I have had a slice of birthday cake. That's, <gasps> that's about it so oh, far. That's good. It's my second lockdown birthday, which is... Of course. What did you do mm. on your first one? I don't really remember it, because it was, lockdown was new, and we were, we were all so um, frightened and excited. We didn't know what it was going to mean. And um, and no, nobody thought it was going to last long enough that I was going to be in lockdown again for a second birthday. I mean, I'm talking like I'm the only person this has happened to, rather than the entire <laughs> most most of the nation uh, and, and beyond. But um, having experienced it from my point of view, it's it's been interesting. 
Oh, wow. Well, I think a bit of cake goes a long way to making a day a good day. It was a very narrow slice, though. It was about, I would say, it was less than two centimetres thick. Um, what? So we're talking at about, about an inch or so, if, if Who, you're an imperial. Whose and it just was made this? me realise that I really am in my late 30s now, where <laughs> the, that's the amount of cake. Because I, I, I was with vegan cake. And um, that is a because I'm a vegan. Um, sure. And that, like, if you've, you've you if you've been in a cake shop when there's there's always one thinner slice of cake, and when the cake shop person gives you that slice out of all of the other slices, <laughs> I I I I know that as a, a middle class white guy I can't claim oppression, but it feels I just feels like. <laughs> I'm not saying it's the worst thing to have ever happened to a person, but it, it feels like a profound wrong that I've experienced so many times. I don't think I've ever not been given the smallest available slice. But now here I am uh, approaching approaching 40 several years away. Several years away, in case anyone is casting someone in their mid-30s with my general wizardy appearance. Now I'm, I'm saying, actually, I'll have the small slice. I don't want to... Because it's a bit rich. What's become of me? Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh dear, that's I know. A ba- that's not something that I ever want to. No, achieve. I know. I, I used to start the day by eating an entire packet of ginger nuts, just <laughs> as just just as a little, you know, like a stroll, and I, I did never even notice it. And now, no, can't do it. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I'm, I'm sure you'll be much healthier for it in your innards. I think your innards <sighs> will be happy. Yeah, but what kind of a life is it? What? <laughs> Just to confirm, you're listening to a lovely time. That is a lovely time podcast where we talk about lovely things, not horrible feet or <laughs> pre-diabetes. Yeah, not the, this isn't the disgusting feet and, and ennui <laughs> podcast. <laughs> not yet, not yet. Um, so let's talk. Let's bloody talk about lovely times. Yeah, if, if if we may. So, what's a lovely time that you've had in your past? This was the hardest question for me to answer. Of uh, you, you sent me some questions in advance, and it, the question was, "When was the last time you had a lovely time?" And I couldn't remember one. Oh no! Because um, <laughs> I kind of tried to think of something that was outside of my tiny flat that I live in, um, and but really, I think it is today. I think it is my current birthday because um, this has been a because it's I'm enjoying it so much more than my last birthday. So I I am currently oh. experiencing my most recent lovely time. Oh, in that's In the post nice. cake glow. A tiny slither of cake. Tiny, glow. yeah, a tiny, a single micron of <laughs> cake. <laughs> the crumb glow, as I like to call yeah, it. Yeah. Did you put an alarm on to get up, or did you wake up naturally? I always, I guess, I always put an alarm. On. I, I, I just, just too much of a busy boy. Too much of a, too really? much of a good lad. Yeah, getting up early. <laughs> I, I, too much I, I, of a good boy. Yeah, too much of a great boy. Um, one of <laughs> top 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 level boy, and uh, that's how I think of myself. Um, just an, an excellent good boy, I would say. Um, that's his Twitter bio. He's sticking with it. <laughs> excellent good boy, ABK. Um, I, I treat myself like you might a pet dog. Just like uh, who's a good boy? Who's a, who's good? Who got up and well done? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I am like, I'm like my own dog. I'm always thrilled when I get home. <laughs> Absolutely excited about that. <laughs> That's lovely. That's lo- what time did you get up? Um, I I usually I'm always because most people I know are comedians. So the 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 disparity between I get up at five a.m. and I just start writing because that's when all the great jokes come, and the people who are who just never leave bed yeah. is enormous and I, I never know where to pitch myself because some people are raising nine children and writing award-winning shows um and just just not sleeping and others <laughs> are oh, i spent the entire day playing grand theft auto um wearing just p- pants on my face and i am <laughs> neither of those people so i i usually try and start work about half nine Ooh, bearing in good. mind that this is an audio medium, but like my bed is there. It's like behind that. So it's right. like if there were a shelf there, I could be touching my bed. So the process of getting out of bed and into the office space mm. slash mm. kitchen slash bathroom that I'm in now, it's not 
too arduous. That's not. I think half past nine is a good time. Yeah, it feels. Were... It's like a, it's like a sort of media start time. It's like yeah. uh, oh no, we don't we don't start at nine. <laughs> we don't start at nine a.m. Alistair. <laughs> we we uh, we need to get the juices flowing. So uh, it's a half nine start, but yeah. you will work till about eleven p.m. without pay. It's like, oh, I'm so so glad I got a job in Soho. Yeah, yeah I'm in woo-hoo. the media. <laughs> I work in the media, getting I, coffees I for media. other people who work yeah, in the media. Yes, that's the media. That's the media. Oh, I think yeah, I think I think you've nailed the the start time of the day. I think. I so. think I think if you're getting up after eleven a.m., the day's ruined. And you can I try and be creative, agree. but it's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. Yes, the. Um, the the morning is I hate the morning I'm I'm, I'm decidedly not a morning person and it, and it angers me that morning people have determined that that is the correct way to be simply because they were up first, uh, which is <laughs> really unfair because it's it's fine but at the same time if I haven't really made a start on something before midday it does feel like oh I might as well just go for a walk. Well, you that's know? what I do if I if I sleep in and I get up after eleven, then I'm like well. I just eat cake in bed and watch the chase, probably. <laughs> just classic episodes of the chase all day. And then I'll probably go to bed at four AM the next yes. day. Yep. And then there's a cycle of about ooh, eight years where I don't get anything done. <laughs> eight years off the back of getting one mega bus back from Glasgow after a after an unpaid open spot seven years ago and that, and that's it forever. You're out of sync. And you, what, you can never return to the waking five world. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. If that man on the front row hadn't been sick on himself, that would have, that set probably would have uh, changed everything. So probably well worth doing for the, the experience. Probably would have got through to the quarterfinals. <laughs> <laughs> you just never know, do you? You never know how your life no. would be different. No, you can't know. We can't know, but you've got to take every shot that comes. <laughs> and, ju- and if someone's sick on themselves, just riff, just roll with it. Just roll with it. Just be in the moment, man. Okay, if you want to work or, in the media, or do what I do and just the do the same set that you were going to do anyway, because I don't really have any, don't really do improvisation. <laughs> just not deviating. Yeah, at not, all. De- not, not, don't acknowledge it. That's what I say. Paramedics are coming in. There's no. a stretcher. They're getting taken away. Don't deviate. No, just exactly. Just forward. do the whimsy louder. That's my strategy in that situation. You should do a a masterclass, a comedy masterclass. <laughs> Belligerent whimsy with ABK. Be louder. If it's going wrong, just do it louder, faster, yeah, louder, and louder, louder, fa- louder and faster. That's that's how you win back an audience that's lost trust in you. Just get really loud and fast. And sad. Get sort of sad. <laughs> Have a little quiver in your voice. <laughs> little glaze over of your eyes. This is too real now. It's so long since I've done the <laughs> actual gig of that. Uh, <laughs> I'm feeling it inside of my. What is this? body part the soul i don't know where it is it's it's between the lungs and uh stomach what is that i can't see what you're pointing at it could no be uh, in your pants where you're pointing. i don't know is this the, the soul it's there i'm, I'm going what off that? mic to demonstrate yeah. the part of my body that i'm pointing at what is that oh um i reckon Through that's a, one of them bits I, that you don't know like the gallbladder i or think something. it might be that for the benefit of the listener when i said i'm pointing at a body part i'm fully clothed and everything obviously i'm just i'm pointing through a jumper <laughs> I'm not. I'm not flopping anything out for judgment. <laughs> it's a lovely. T- Welcome back to a lovely time. Just, just to clarify once and I've again. just got this weird foot. I thought you might have a look at as well while I, while I'm here. Um, What's this? Is this a soul? Kind of. <laughs> oh, whoa! An actual, an actual, an actual pun. Yeah. Very nice work. Yeah. Producer John, can you just mark that as a as a joke? We can put that out <laughs> on the socials. Okay, great. So let's um let's create your lovely time. Yeah. Hopefully not involving any horrible feet or anything like that. No, no. Um so where where are you taking us? Paint as a picture. Where in the world are you going to be? My first thought when you we were talking about sort of my ideal lovely time was I'd like to find a mysterious note Ooh. that I think would be the beginning of my lovely time, and I, th- Ooh, I would probably I like be on it. on a Scottish moor or something like that. <gasps> oh, now, you know those big rocks that are deposited by glaciers? What are they called? Like glacial erratics, I think they're called. Um, uh, yeah, that's why. Or is that say, a pull quote I put on my comedy poster? Glacial erratic. <laughs> very, very slow, but difficult to pin down. That's my style. 
I think glacial erratic is the geological term for the big rocks that you get in the middle of nowhere in Scotland. Um, now, uh, and in, in the book Kidnapped by Robert Louis Stevenson, they hide on the top of them to escape soldiers uh, and nearly bake to death in the heat, which <gasps> seems a little unlikely for Scotland. But I guess it was is that, that one day of the year. that what happens in the book? That's one of the things I've, that happens. I've had, I've had that book since I was about six. I've never read it, but it's got a lovely cover. Oh, does it, is it Davy Balfour climbing the stairs with a candle or something like that? It's a sort I, I mean, of how lilac you know colour. <laughs> it's a sort of lilac <laughs> cover. It's got a lot of purpley lilacs to it. That's all oh, I yeah. remember. Nice. But, um... It's a good book. So that book is set where my mum is from uh, in, <gasps> in northwest Scotland, um, Appin in Argyle. So, um, oh, wow. And, and there's, these big, uh, there's lots of those big rocks. So, yeah, so like one of them with like a little rain hollow in the top. And what's that inside? A strange box with unusual markings, and inside that, a mysterious note. That would be the that would be the start of a great day for me. That's incredible. Okay, so what's on the note? I've no, idea. no, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe cri- cryptic runes, perhaps, Ooh. or an indication. I don't want I don't want them to be a murder to solve. Although I would, <laughs> ma- I mainly want to solve a murder, but I I don't feel like someone should have to die for me to have a lovely day. What? Well, no. But that's capitalism. That's very kind of you. That just adds to you being a top great good boy. Yeah. <laughs> He doesn't even, to be fair to him, he doesn't even need a murder to happen no. to have a good time. No, just an injury. So, um, what I, if it's a murder that happened so far back? Yes, that, you know, nobody, nobody cares. cares now. Nobody, ca- nobody cares. Yeah, nobody cares now. yes, yeah. a historical murder from the ancient days of like <gasps> the seventies. Or <laughs> no one would investigate a crime that long ago. Yeah, oh, I, I, th- I think I think that I, I, um, yeah, I, like I'm not into conspiracy theories and that sort of thing, but I do understand the appeal of them because the the sense that you've just sort of pulled on this thread and uh, you've discovered a whole a whole world beneath the surface that everybody else hasn't noticed. That's yes, what I would like to do. That is good. That and is then probably good. you go around the town and you, you notice like in the configuration of the buildings, there's probably like coded messages in the shingles hanging off the pubs, that sort of thing. So, oh, look, oh right. So the three men, that, that must they must be the men on that pub sign. We're on the right track. Oh, I don't know what we're going to find God. out at the end of the day. But that, this that sort of pathetic nerd stuff, that's what I would love to do. But I want well, it to be real as well. I don't yeah, want it to be a setup. It's not nerdy. It's not no. nerdy if it's real. It's, it's, it's <laughs> shroud. <laughs> How can it it's be not nerdy, nerdy if, it's, if real? it's not real. Obviously, that's what I also meant to say. But it's mm. it's 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 shrouded in danger and mystery. Exactly. There could be um, who knows, an ancient sect could be oh. after me, possibly. I don't. I don't know if oh, I. My God. I don't know if that sounds lovely, but it does add drama. Well, like the Order yeah. of the Golden Fleece, or one of these sorts of organisations that I think were just sort of medieval trading organisations, but now sound like neo-Nazi groups. But I don't oh, know. Is which. that what the Golden Fleece is? I think they were just merchants, like Flemish merchants or something. But it sounds like Golden Dawn, the far right Greek political party. <laughs> so let's not get them confused. I don't want the Golden Dawn after me. Well, no, I don't want to go drinking the Golden Dawn in York. No, no. Although I'm sure that it does exist somewhere in a basement of another pub. Hmm. Um, okay, okay. So we've got we've got a hell of a start to the. Is day. that too specific or too general? It's, it, there's no right or wrong. Okay. There's no right or wrong. But I'm yeah, getting a sense that it's wrong. But okay, okay. No. I'm, I, am no. I doing it wrong? Am I doing the podcast wrong? <laughs> no, you've been a general good boy. Top, oh, top, top good boy. Okay. So, oh, just a little biscuit. Give myself a little biscuit for that. Good. <laughs> a little pat on the head. He's wagging his tail. <laughs> <laughs> um. So we're, would we stay? Would we stay in this uh, Scottish location for the for the whole? For the whole duration of the day. I think I'd probably have to travel because there'd probably be like a series of key points connected by your friend and mine, ley lines, <laughs> to, to in order to, you know, map out probably, I don't know, a, like a Batman style arrow pointing at a, a medieval cave or something. A medieval cave? Most caves are older than... <laughs> who, who ever heard of a cave that's only a few hundred years old? What happened? contemporary caves you get you know city centers yeah a a 1950s post-war cave it's all blocky and square brutalist architecture (laughs) okay 
So you're going to travel around a little bit. Do you yeah, have a companion? Collecting clues in my note in my notebook in my journal. <gasps> Wait a minute. Do I? Am I the one who dies and the journal gets found just as I'm about to discover it? Am I going to die on my own perfect day? Remember, a lovely time. Who you're listening to, <laughs> a lovely time. No a murders lovely, need a to lovely happen. Time, a lovely time. And the glooming <laughs> spectre of death doesn't even have to enter. You don't even have to mention it on the podcast. <laughs> Why bring mortality into it, Amy? It's what I would say. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry I brought it up. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's just, um, That's on me, that. Let's just gloss over it. <laughs> let's talk about the notebook. Yes. Do you, do you like stationery? Are you a stationery head? I am, Look, I'll be clear to the listener. I am a nerd. I accept that. But I'm not... I don't I tick all of the boxes. I am not, uh, I'm not one of those people who has encyclopedic knowledge of anything. So I don't know everything about Star Trek or everything about trains. And I'm not one of the organised post-it notes. Nice new stationery. Four different types of fountain pen. I'm not that... There's no organisational or, or memory-based nerdery because I can't do any of that. So my notes are all just um, printed out. I'm, I'm for the for the listener can hear. Yeah. They are just printed out scripts and other things that I've folded over and written notes on, in abs uh, the, in the, in the, the scrappiest listener. and messiest possible way. He's ju he's just holding up some toilet roll there, but we'll just let him. <laughs> <laughs> just let him carry on. He's written some. I don't know what he's written it in, but that's just some. That's just some scrunched up tissue paper. Okay. Um, that's no, my so, notation system, though. <laughs> uh, what would you eat on your on your lovely day? What's your What's your um, choice well, of food? I, I've, and I've drink? already on my the lovely I'm having now. I've already had a vegan cake, and that is sure. that is one of the big challenges because um, because vegans are, so, are sort of. Um, one of the, I would say, like a self-oppressed minority group, like um, people who for whom everything has been going fine, but who've gone, no, actually, I'd like to suffer, <laughs> and and I'd like to use language in such a way as it implies that this is happening to me rather than I have done this. So it's things like, oh, I can't have that, I can't have that, as if like a giant floating head has forbidden it, rather than what you're actually saying is, I am refusing to have that now, currently, in the present. Um, because of my decisions, but um, as a consequence of that, a lot of and a lot of the recipes belong to the sort of the early days of um, veganism. You know, like like nineteen seventies veganism, where it's all just you're basically eating sort of sad sawdust based recipes, and and the picture, even the pictures in the cooking books, all exist in sepia tones, but they're not sepia photographs. It's just that everything in the picture <laughs> is a shade of brown. <laughs> and it's uh, so and so vegan desserts are often really awful like uh, the number of times when the vegan option is a date slice and it's like i do not want a date slice no. No. a date has no business being in a dessert it's what is it what is it i actually now that i'm saying that genuinely don't know what a date is is it a dried plum i think it's some sort of cream egg but i'm not sure <laughs> I've, have you, I've, never, I've, I've never had one. Have you ever had a, a vegan cream egg? Um, no, can you? You get can them? get them. You can get them, but they the manufacturing standards are um, are are low. It's a real sort of ersatz sort of like imagine a, a, if you visualise in like an East German cream egg. If you visit, visit, visit visualise like a Stalinist cream egg, so it's it's bulkier. It's the wrong shape. The two halves of the egg they're not aligned. It's so it's. <laughs> It, there's a clear lip around the circumference of the egg and just rock solid, you know, like sort of like Terry's chocolate orange hard. Like, poof, poof, poof. Really? I will not crack. <laughs> no, comrades, the interior of the egg must be protected. Like, that's what they're like. But um, you take what you can get if you're a sounds, vegan. It sounds great. I'd have Better it. than a date slice, isn't it? Oh, for sure. But so so you'd have you'd have some vegan cake, would you? But I guess vegan this is cake, your yeah. this is your lovely time. So you could have anything you wanted, and and it could be cruelty free. It could be really ethical. It could be like produced in a lab. Oh, oh, I not? see. What, I, I see what you're mm. doing. Like mm. like Jesus in the desert. You're tempting me. I I see what this podcast <laughs> is now. 
I, I you just see get the, vegans the... on and go, yeah, but what if you're on an island and then <laughs> you was only pig and that, and then you what? What would you not have it then? <laughs> this is the whole premise. That's a of direct the quote from every conversation I've ever had. <laughs> That pig on that island. It's like if you were a pig on an island, you'd be looking askance at everyone who arrived. You, like, this is the, every time a vegan arrives, like this is the exact situation we didn't want to happen as a, the only pig on this island. I think is if you're eating the one pig on the island, all you're doing is so you're going to live like a few weeks longer before exactly, you starve. Exactly. What's that going to do? Nothing. Also, why are they so bothered about this hypothetical pig on this island, but they don't care about like trams rights, for example? <laughs> <laughs> Why? We, we, this is Britain. This we are on the so island much. of horrible pigs. This is we're there. <laughs> it's really happening. So what? What would? What would you have? I mean, I'm trying not to tempt you, but just you are. You are. You te- you're tempting me. The devil often appears in a, a, a in a variety of guises. It can seem like it can seem like a harmless award nominated crab. Uh, crab. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it can seem like a, a, t- a talented crustacean. With, uh, with you know really racking up the credits under under its little crab belt, but <laughs> at the, but uh, behind that it's the, it's so it's the enemy, the it's the great Satan, it's the devil. it's uh, it's uh, Beelzebub. So I'm I'm just cautious. Um, chocolate, double chocolate, double chocolate fudge. That's it. For me, maybe the middle section could have raspberry in it, but Ooh, yeah. my feeling is, why have an element that isn't chocolate? That's my opinion of cakes. Triple chocolate. Triple chocolate, yes. And the air around the cake, can that be slightly Chocolate. chocolatey? Mm. And uh, mm-hmm. can I have a hot chocolate with it? Because... <laughs> and the oh, table yeah. and my clothes, can they also be chocolate? Because why... What's the, what is the point of the other flavours? Now it's we've got chocolate. It's a weird choice, isn't it? To pick anything other than chocolate for anything. For clothes. Yes. yes. <laughs> like, why yeah. isn't it made of chocolate, though? Like, why not it? choc? Because the other thing is, being vegan, <laughs> and we often the vegan option is like, it's vegan and it's gluten-free, which is like saying it's vegan and there's no point eating it because it's <laughs> awful. Don't give me vegan yeah. and gluten-free. Don't give me vegan and sugar-free. Don't give me vegan and... I just want vegan. I want vegan and... Just vegan. Just give, give me sugar, gluten and chocolate crammed together, please. Oh, yeah. And a lot of the times the flavour is like... Um, it's sort of lavender and quince. It's like, have you heard of no. tastes? <laughs> I don't know what... Quince is? I'm not a medieval troubadour. Chocolate, please. What? Can I have something that, that post dates the discovery of South America as a flavour? I bet you're a nightmare in a restaurant, actually. <laughs> <laughs> you're an absolute bloody nightmare. So, on your ideal perfect day, mm-hmm. we're shrouded in mystery. We're in Scotland. Yes. We've got a notebook, which may or may not be toilet roll. I don't, I'm not judging <clears throat> anyone's preference. Um, we know what you're eating, chocolate. We know what you're drinking. Chocolate. Eating a lot of chocolate, yes. Absolutely. Chocolate. Um, what would spoil it? Probably. I don't know whether I should say this, because I don't want to be negative, but... Probably the presence of my nemesis, who is called... His name's Roger, and I've only met him once. (laughs) And that is his real name, but I don't remember his surname. So um, hopefully he won't be able... Hopefully if he listens to this, he won't realise that he's my nemesis. Is he real? He's a real person. You can't have a nemesis. You're far too nice to have a nemesis. That should give you an idea of quite how awful this guy oh. is that he's my nemesis i don't know yeah i'm sure he's not aware of being my nemesis um <laughs> okay um uh well, back back when i was a film student uh in in 2010 it was a different world um you know the financial crisis had happened um uh gordon brown had recently stopped being prime minister you know the coalition government it's, i'm just trying to paint a picture for um <laughs> context um what else was going on in 2000 anyway it was a different world i was a film student um and i was on a film shoot with a guy called roger who was a production assistant i think and he was the worst person i've ever met and whenever i try and tell people about this it sounds petty and like i'm in the wrong uh, or maybe holding on to a grudge for, for years for no good reason so it so I don't, I don't know how, I want to express it in such a way that you hate him as much as I hate him. So 
And the best example I can think of is once I was talking to him, asking him to do something for me. So I, because um, because I was I, I outranked him on the film, so he was there to help me do things right. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I asked him to do mm-hmm. something, and he said okay, and then he turned around and he did a karate kick. <laughs> is that enough information to ex- to communicate why he was the worst human being alive? So he was like, all right, I'm on it. Turned around. Hi-ya! Oh, no, mm-hmm. Roger. Roger. Oh, I did, Roger, I mean, no. he, he did other things. So um, we were in a shoot in an abandoned hospital because it was a student film and all student films have to be shot in abandoned hospitals. <laughs> yeah, yeah. An abandoned mental hospital, in fact. <laughs> and um, it, it, we'd run out of water because there was no running water. So we were making tea with the, with the carbonated water, which, uh, as you and I both know, is bubbly. And wow. I, I, as we were pouring it in, I was waiting for a cup of tea because I always want a cup of tea. And I said, oh, uh, as like as a joke, Amy, you, you're a you're a comedy writer. You'll understand that a joke, I've heard what of a jokes. joke is. Yeah, 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 you've heard I've of jokes. So as, he, as I was pouring it in, I sort of said, uh, oh, I've never had fizzy tea. Just trying to lighten the mood because, you know, we've run out of water. So it's but I, like I wasn't being serious. I said, we have never had I've never had fizzy tea. And he completely seriously said, well, it won't be fizzy because when the water boils, then the, you know, the dissolved particles of uh, oxygen, uh, carbon dioxide, they're going to they're escape. So, of course, it's going to be flat once you make the tea. And I, ha- I, I don't think I'm particularly easily insulted, but I realise my vulnerability is if you imply that if you imply that you're even slightly more clever than me ever. <laughs> and you haven't got evidence to back it up. Like if you're not there with your with your maths GCSE to certificate when you do it. <laughs> if you if you imply that you think that I don't know that boiling carbonated water boiled carbonated water won't be fizzy after you boiled it. That that's my that is my limit. That's the point at which I think maybe maybe human rights aren't universal. Maybe not everybody <laughs> deserves to live. Oh. Dear me, sounds toxic. Is it the worst crime ever? I also, also, I, um, I sent, I sent him off to Sainsbury's to get um, some some pectin, which is what you use to make jelly if you're a vegan for for making props. Uh, uh, I'm very clear about that. Where did he go? He went to Tesco and came back with gelatines. And oh, he didn't have pectin, so I got gelatine, oh. which is made of pigs. Like, yeah, because I. That's why I told you to go to Sainsbury's. Why they have it? So why did you? You thought you knew better, didn't you? And you went to the nearer one that doesn't have the thing that I asked for. Because you thought you knew better, Roger. And you know what? When he was in there, he probably did a little karate kick. <laughs> I don't want to make things worse for you. I don't want to make you feel more hatred towards this That's probably this how he got imbecile. the packets into the, the trolley off the shelf. Just ha-cha, 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 <laughs> then down. Yeah, I oh, can he see why he's your nemesis. Once I saw him doing a wheelie on a, in, a, in a wheelchair that was a prop for the film. And he was just there balancing, yeah. just doing a wheelie for about yeah. 10 minutes. Yeah. And that isn't that bad. But I just, you know how it is. You know, there's that there's that White Stripes lyric about walking, talking quickly, burning garbage, take, looking happy, taking pictures. So completely stupid. Like every single thing a person does when you hate them, everything they do <laughs> infuriates you. Oh, that's really interesting. I've never thought of it that way around because you pre- you assume that you're hating them because of their actions when actually their I don't actions think so. are probably fine. You've, mm-hmm. just, you've taken a dislike and now everything they do can only make it worse. Is there anything Roger could do to regain some level of... I'm not talking friendship. I'm talking neutrality. Oh. thing is, right, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking if he... If he, let's say he saves a child from a burning building, if he, yeah. if he then puts that child down and does a karate kick, I, I'm pushing him back in to the, to the, to the, to the inferno. Well, him or the kid. <laughs> <laughs> if the kid does a karate kick and I realise he's saved his own child, I'm lobbing the baby in after. Get, just let's end the line with, with him. And I you say. are listening to A Lovely Time. <laughs> <laughs> So many murders. So many murders. Um, is, it, um, is it murder to f- push someone into a burning building? Yeah. Yes. I don't think you'd get away with it in court. I'd no. give it a go. <laughs> it I'll be, back you all the way, but I don't think... It would be frowned upon, wouldn't it? 
Yeah, it's I not far so. enough away from murder that I can feel confident. Yeah, mm. I, yeah. I'd say, as a rule, listeners, don't push people into burning buildings if they've done a little karate kick. I don't, I don't but that's just me. That. I don't know if you can expect that as a listener. Be reasonable. <laughs> it was quite a big karate kick. I don't. I don't know why you're playing down the karate kick. Because what did it? Was there a little jump that accompanied it? Did did it was both the noise. feet ever leave the ground at the same time? This I don't. Is like I can't tell you because I was blinded with rage. So I don't have a, a crisp <laughs> visual memory of it. I'm. I'm sorry. I'm not perfect, Amy. You know. Um, in the heat of the moment, I was boiling with fury. So I didn't. <laughs> okay. I get no. I I understand. So Roger showing up, I understand why that would ruin mm-hmm. your puzzle solving adventure day. I'd hate it. Do you solve the mystery by the end of the day? Yes, I think I, I think I do. Even though inevitably the solution to a mystery is always slightly disappointing. The mystery is more fun. Nobody actually wants to find out the answer. It's like when you see the monster in monster movies. Half the time you're like, mm-hmm. wish I'd seen it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, wish I'd seen it the just monster. Look, looks funny. It's yeah. funny. I was scared of it, and now I hate it. Except in Alien, where where you see it and you go, "Oh no, it is that bad." Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, I'm, <laughs> uh, now I can see it. I'm more scared. I, I watched The Meg last week. For the that's first about time. the um, that's the the art house picture about the really really big shark, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. about a big shark. <laughs> Vin Vendors, isn't it? I think. Um. I don't know what or who or what was going on, but it's a big shark and it's big and it's a shark and that's the film. And you know what? I didn't hate it. (laughs) (laughs) Top 10, I think. Top 10 of all time. But uh, yeah, the Meg. uh, It's it's very weird that the, um, the success of Jaws has spawned a genre of films because arguably Jaws is just like, it's a, it's a scary animal film. So it's like a monster movie. But somehow people have not noticed that and have decided that Big Shark Scares People counts as its own <laughs> genre, which is weirdly specific. You've got your rom-coms, you've got your thrillers, you've got your sh- Big Sharks. <laughs> big, exactly. All, all the genres. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that film, that, you know, Leprechaun, where a leprechaun kills people. That's one film. But if there were like dozens of different films where different leprechauns murdered people, you'd be like, how is... What? That's how weird. is this a genre? Yeah, how is that? That's not a genre. Like if there were okay. other Muppet Christmas carols, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> doesn't make any... If there was a second puppet-based Christmas carol film, you'd be like, this seems oddly familiar. <laughs> I admire them for, for going, that worked, I'm going to do the same, <laughs> but it's going to be a bit bigger, The actually. shark is going to get incrementally larger each time. It's equivalent of going, my dad's bigger than yours. It's like my shark's bigger than yours yep. in my film. Yep. God, I bet you feel pathetic, <laughs> don't you, doing chores? You idiot. You idiot. Mine's bigger. Um, so you, so you, you would solve the mystery? I would solve the mystery, yeah. At the very last second, of course. So probably oh, lining crystals. Yeah, probably turning yeah. stone tiles. <laughs> that's a beam of light shining. Wow. Yeah. Through a through a crystal, if via a, like a Fresnel lens, illuminating the correct part of a fresco, maybe, on the wall, oh. revealing something within. I probably also like the the secret. It was in our hearts all along. Like I'm not looking for gold or silver. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, yeah, that's a really satisfying end to a to a good old day. In or blustery it could be, Scotland. Yeah, like, or Christ's foreskin, something like that. One of the or lesser Christ's relics. Foreskin. Yeah, yeah. Well, we don't know if it was lesser. It might be huge. I've seen it. <laughs> could, be like a, could be like a weighted blanket. <laughs> like, a, yeah, like a hula hoop. <laughs> the, 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 the sporty ones, I mean. Obvi- yeah, obviously the sporty ones. Or the, or the big hoop variety. The larger ones but for grown-up fingers. <laughs> You know the one. <laughs> oh, I know. You know the, the larger ones. hula hoops, so you can pretend you haven't grown up and nothing has changed. Yeah. Yeah. Big time. Mhm. Big time. Well, I think you have given us a real insight, not only into your perfect day, but into your mind. Thank you. I mean, the expression you're putting on your face as as you're saying that makes it seem almost negative, but. 
<laughs> I mean, this is what it's like being a, a top class good boy. So, what can well, I say? You've given us an insight into being a top class good boy, solving puzzles, uh, eating chocolate. <laughs> that's exactly what my mum does maybe my mum's a top class good boy she does her arrow words she's got her Cadbury's milk chocolate she's a top class good boy I, I would love arrow words except that if you do not know who anyone from a soap is then don't you really <laughs> yeah. you know it's yeah. like to do cryptic crosswords you need to have gone to private school and learned various Latin phrases but to, to, yeah. to do arrow words you would better watch Corrie because if you don't good luck and you better watch Corrie in the in the 1980s <laughs> You better watch, yeah, no, archive Corrie. <laughs> like Victorian Coronation Street. You better know all of it. Well, that's my perfect day. Bit of Victorian Corrie. Oh, Bit that. of an arrow word. Love an arrow word. There we go. There we bloody uh, arrow words, go. Yeah. Very much crosswords without the puzzle element. I love them. <laughs> it's just writing words down. <laughs> <laughs> What's arguably, that? that's yes. an apple. I'll write apple. It is sort of. It is arguably looking at a picture of a thing and then writing the word that names the thing next to it, um, based on the direction of an arrow. A, cy- a cynic might say. But you can't. If you can't complete them, you don't have the right to slag them off. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. Those who those who can do. <laughs> it's easy to snipe from the sidelines, isn't it? It is. It bloody is. Just because right, I can't remember well, Deidre Barlow's or Deidre Rashid's <laughs> maiden name. <laughs> well, you can, and you did. That was, that, was fun, that was a phenomenal bit of knowledge. Thank you so much for uh, joining us. It's Thank been you. an absolute honour and a privilege to be in your company. Thank you. I th- uh, Thank you. And, and uh, I, I dub the an honorary top class good girl. Oh, that's kind. Do I get a badge of some no, there's sort? No, there's no cash equivalent. It is, um, oh, right. it is well. purely, purely, uh, I've forgotten the word. What an awful way to end the podcast. I've not been able to think of the word. <laughs> Never mind. Well, Can't there we have that's it. That's age for you, isn't it? That's, uh, that's, the, that's the creep of the Grim Reaper towards us all. That's all that cake you've had. That's that few crumbs of cake gone, gone right into your bloodstream, oh, into your brain. The, the glucose. Shouldn't it? I had a coffee I think as well. You should... Caffeine. Oh well, that's Those that's what that's what's happening. It's all it's all kicking off in mm-hmm. your digestive system. Let's let's not L- yeah, get yeah. into that. Uh, it's been so lovely chatting to you. Thank you so much for coming on. Where can we find you? What can we listen to? You can listen to the Lawmen podcast. L O R E M E N. Uh, it's about folklore. It's me and James Shakespeare. Um and I'm Alistair Beckett King. Both all of those very difficult to spell names. Sorry. Uh, if you're not good at spelling, we don't want you, is what we're saying, basically. No dyslexics, please, is the... That's our slogan for the podcast. That is uh, a sensible grown-up comedy for um, for um, for nerds. And um, and I'm on Twitter at Mr. ABK, M-I-S-T-E-R-A-B-K. And if you, if you Google Alistair Beggar King, I come up because there aren't any others. I'm the only one. So you'll find me on YouTube doing... Little little uh, humorous sketches and uh, that sort of thing. Incredible sketches, Thank incredible you. videos, very well observed, incredibly well produced. It's good content, and you know you very rarely get that these days. It's it's so, t- the one thing out. I say about the internet is there's not enough content, and I have I think I'm probably the first comedian to have thought of creating some, and <laughs> um, it's going well so far. Great. Check it out. Uh, please. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for leaving the, the door open for them not to check it out there. <laughs> what a good boy. What a good top boy. That good top boy ABK really is. He deserves every biscuit in the world. And so he went on a treasure hunt in Scotland. Of course he did. You know, we largely went off piste. Not sure how much of a lovely time we covered, but we definitely had a lovely time. There is no denying. And he passed the vegan desert island test as well. Good boy, top boy, good boy, top boy. If you enjoyed that, then you might be excited to hear that Alistair will be on our live show in July at the Chapel Town Picture House in Manchester. So pop Saturday the 3rd of July in the diary. 
um, right now, please. Tickets have just gone on sale and the June show sold out in like a week or something. So um, get on it is what I'm trying to say. Search a lovely time in C tickets and we will be there. Thanks very much for listening. We hope you had a lovely time. And if you have, let us know in the review section, please, on Apple Podcasts. And if you type in your lovely time in the review, um, I'm going to read it out. Get you involved. I want to I want to chat to you. I want to know you. So uh, please do that. That'd be fun. That's better than just writing a review, isn't it? So if you could leave us some lovely times in the reviews, that'd be great. And if you want to make those reviews five stars, I'm not going to call the police. I'm not going to. You'll go free for another day. Thank you so much for joining us and make sure you come back next week for another lovely time. This podcast is made by A Lovely Time Productions and hosted by Amy Gledhill with music by Jack Evans. Just keep shoveling the, the, the old words into the whimsy engine.